Have you ever wondered why countries wallow in debt when they can just print more money? The answer is simple, inflation. But how does it happen? Welcome to ALUX.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. Inflation occurs when there's more money in circulation than products and commodities in the market. The prices of these items rise and consumers need more money to buy practically everything. For instance, if a loaf of bread costs a dollar and you have $100, your $100 may purchase 100 loaves of bread. Then, out of nowhere, the government provides everyone additional money to spend. Because everyone suddenly has more money, demand for a loaf of bread skyrockets. The cost of bread might suddenly increase to $2, and now your $100 only gets you 50 loaves of bread when it used to be double that. It's just a simple economic law of supply and demand. The story of the old Weimar Republic comes to mind as a more realistic illustration. Unlike the French, who raised income taxes to fund the First World War, the Germans borrowed instead, planning to pay off its debts after the war by exacting reparations onto defeated territories. The mark, the German currency, fell from 4.2 to 7.9 per dollar due to this borrowing scheme alone. The strategy backfired miserably, and they lost the war, leaving them with a debt of 112 billion marks, or $26.3 billion. What exactly did they do? Well, even though income had not grown, officials started creating money to cover debts, which worsened existing inflation issues in the country. And as we said, the original plan was to impose reparations onto defeated allies after winning the war, but they didn't, which meant reparations were now Germany's burden to bear, without the economic resources to do so. The Reparation Commission decided against accepting payments in marks, since the mark's value was rapidly decreasing which in turn prompted Germany to purchase foreign currencies at any available rate, only accelerating the mark's depreciation and resulting in the government having to spend even more to purchase other currencies to pay its debts with. The German mark plummeted to 330 marks per dollar after the first reparation payment. And because the inflation situation wasn't improving, it could only lead to one thing, hyperinflation. The value of the mark sunk to roughly 7,400 marks per dollar, leaving the country unable to pay reparations once again. However, despite its loss, Germany did gain one advantage during the war. It secured an industrial seat, the Ruhr Valley. Unable to continue paying reparations in money, French and Belgian troops occupied the Ruhr region and insisted Germany's reparations be paid in products. The German government reacted to this with a surprising egoistic response, telling workers in these industries to not work for the enemies. The economy was already very rough, so the idea of not getting paid wasn't something many people could handle. In response, the government promised striking workers financial support in the form of printing yet more money. Within a year, a loaf of bread that was once 160 marks was selling for 200 billion marks. It got so bad they stopped paying workers once a day or weekly or monthly because commodities purchased in the morning for 20 million would cost 60 million by the end of the day. Workers began being paid two to three times daily to keep pace with the economic reality. And all of this happened because the money printed did not correspond to the economic resources available in the market. So technically speaking, the problem isn't printing more money. The problem is printing more money than there are goods and services to back it up. That's why countries just printing more money when there's debts to pay isn't a viable solution long term. So what's happening in the United States? In March 2020, there was an unprecedented demand for market liquidity as there was a massive sale of liquid assets, or U.S. Treasuries. U.S. Treasuries are fixed income securities backed by the federal government. What this means is whenever you buy a treasury bond, it's like you're giving the federal government a loan it has to repay over an agreed-upon period of time. 
the money used to buy treasuries is part of what the government uses to run the country and finance debts. The effects of COVID-19 led many people to sell their treasuries to offset emergency bills caused by the pandemic. It was obvious this massive sell-off would cause the price of the treasuries to drop. So the Federal Reserve, or the Fed, created bank reserves and exchanged them for U.S. treasuries with the primary dealers, the big banks. This was a result of the balance sheets of those banks not being capable of buying the market liquidity on time, which would subsequently lead to them selling it. So the Fed saved the day by swooping in as the primary buyer of these treasuries to prevent a sudden increase in the interest rate and a drop in the price of treasury bonds, both of which would probably lead to the government borrowing even more. This process is referred to as quantitative easing, or QE. What this Fed intervention does is remove U.S. Treasuries from the bank's balance sheets, making room for banks to replace them with other assets, like consumer loans. The government believes if banks give loans to businesses, it would improve the economy and subsequently reduce inflation. But the Fed didn't limit the buying of assets to Treasuries alone. It expanded its reach to other assets these banks were willing to sell. With consideration of the massive liquidity crisis in March, the Fed decided to buy assets according to their values before the crisis to save these banks from losing as much on the sale. What the Fed is doing is what's referred to as printing money. It's not necessarily about physically printing more dollar bills. By now, though, you might be asking how all of these things affect an average American. Well, considering the Fed's main reason for printing money, to control the interest rate and the price of treasury bonds, it's clear an average American is indirectly being saved from a situation where their dollar would buy drastically less. The Fed is trying to cushion the blow, as it were. The whole world is still navigating the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic in so many ways, one of which is the mass massive hit to the global economy. With the pandemic still far from being behind us, it's expected most countries will likely continue using the policies currently in play to salvage national economies. This includes the United States. Which brings us to the question, can the United States continue printing money? Earlier, we highlighted a prime example of why it's economic suicide to print more money without an increased income to back it up. So is the United States trying to commit economic suicide? Are they immune to inflation or hyperinflation? Is there a different yardstick for the United States? Well, to answer these questions, let's circle back to the story about the Weimar Republic. What brought Germany's economy to the ground was the fact that after printing the money, it wasn't being used to pay back debts. Instead, it was using the money to buy other currencies, and that devalues faster than any other thing. The United States currency, the US dollar, is the global reserve currency. What this means is most economic transactions in the world are pegged at a value relative to the US dollar. This gives the United States an advantage over other countries. So yes, there is a different yardstick for the US. The states can fund itself for a long time as long as the US dollar remains the global reserve currency. However, with the introduction of digital currencies gaining momentum all around the world, the US dollar being the global reserve currency might soon be a thing of the past. Countries like China are looking to implement a central bank digital currency policy, which would give any individual eligibility to hold an account directly with the central bank. If this policy is implemented and the government needs to finance debts, they can easily print this digital currency and pay for their debts. And this is the same thing the Fed is doing in the United States. But one thing remains an obstacle. For any digital currency to replace the US dollar as the global reserve currency, the policy has to be implemented in all other major economies in the world. Can the United States keep on printing money? Yes, the Fed can keep on printing money with the current economic order in the world. But is it going to be forever? Probably not. No one can accurately predict when the US dollar will be replaced as the global reserve currency, but chances are that day will come.